Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 9th. We have a tremendous amount of spacecraft in the news this week. A lot of uh, satellites and various orbiters flying around doing things, so we'll start off with Comet 67P and the Rosetta spacecraft. This is going to be this is from the European Space Agency. A lot of this that's going on does not necessarily involve the United States or NASA. It also involves other countries. And uh, First off, this is from the European Space Agency and from the website, the Planetary Society. We're at the comet. Rosetta has arrived at Comet 67P. This is also, besides rendezvousing with the comet, which happened back on Wednesday, and there's some really cool pictures here and animation you need to check out. They have also attached to that the... Uh, Philae, I believe it is, P-H-I-L-A-E craft that is going to harpoon the comet and land on it. So it's going to be the first time a craft has landed on a comet. I thought for a minute it was going to be the second time because I remember that one craft that was not supposed to land ended up landing, uh, but it was on an, uh, I believe that was on an asteroid, not a comet. So this will be the first time on a comet, which is probably a little bit more difficult to do. But uh, this thing kind of looks like a I don't know, an odd-shaped dumbbell, I guess, and it rotates in a 12-hour rotation. If you're looking at some of these pictures, most of these pictures are basically side-on, so it would be like a, a set of dumbbells rotating around in your hand if you were twirling them. It's got about a 12-hour uh, orbit. And at the bottom, which is really nice, too, if you um, it shows a red-blue 3D effect, but if you click on a little link underneath and you're able to do it, I'm able to do it, if you're able to do the cross-eyed 3D image, it gives you a real good... Um, 3D image. It's an excellent 3D image, I think, of the of the comet itself. Um, the name also, besides just the designation, I'll try to pronounce it once, and that's about all. It's the Churi, Churyumov Gerasmenko comet, besides the uh, number letter designation. And uh, I've also I'm going to include a link to the Philae I or whatever you would call it spacecraft, the harpooning spacecraft that's going to land. They had to actually modify it. It originally was scheduled to land on another smaller comet, but they had to do some modifications because of uh, um, some kind of technical difficulties or whatever caused them to have to launch it later. So they had to modify the landing gear, but uh, two good articles to take a look at, too. And then as far as Mars, my favorite um, planet aside from Earth, there's two craft right now. We have a craft going called MAVEN, and then India has a craft called MOM, both atmospheric um, observing spacecraft. The uh, Indian spacecraft is slightly ahead. They're going to uh, reach Mars on September 7th, whereas ours is going to reach, I think, somewhere around the 21st. Oh, well, it'll say in the article, but basically they're both atmospheric spacecraft. Ours is going to be a backup to uh, communications, too, so that we can communicate with the two uh, landers that are still operating on Mars. So, um, even though it has a one-year mission, they're hoping with the fuel on board, our spacecraft can last for at least 10 years and uh, be one of the communication satellites besides doing the atmospheric studies. Um, the Indian craft, um, let's see, I'll just read a little bit from the article. Once the Mars probe will explore, once at Mars, the probe will explore the surface features of the red planet and probe its atmosphere for signs of non-biological and microbial methane. The spacecraft is also designed to test technology used for navigation, communication, and interplanetary space travel, the Indian officials have said. So uh, basically ours is for upper atmosphere studies. Theirs are for a variety of studies. Also, at about one month after both craft arrive and are uh, orbiting Mars, there's going to be a comet flyby. So uh, we might get a, a chance to uh, actually get some imaging and stuff from the comet flyby out of our spacecraft. Um, they didn't say in the article if the India spacecraft was equipped to do that or if they were going to do that or not. But, um, yeah, we may get a little bit extra that we didn't expect out of our, our craft. They're going to try to point towards the comet and get some thermal imaging and some spectrograph and stuff like that. Um, next, this is from Boing Boing. Watch NASA's new saucer fly to near space in this awesome video. It is a pretty cool video. The test wasn't totally successful though, but that's the thing about tests that's nice. They've got two more tests scheduled, but in this one um, they flew it up to the, uh, they took a balloon and took it up to over 100,000 feet so it would have the same kind of thin atmosphere that they have on Mars because you want to test it in as close to real conditions as you want. And this is supposed to assist with future landings of real heavy payloads if they're going to prepare Mars for uh, human exploration. we got to get some uh, heavy equipment up there ahead of the astronauts. 
And if you see in this one too, the the, uh, the parachute after it deploys kind of rips itself to, to bits. But uh, according to uh, if you read this article and according to what I've seen, this is not something they they uh, are going to have any difficulty. They'll just compensate for it, redo it again, and they're going to schedule two more tests. So um, kind of a neat looking little craft here, and uh, I'm glad to see that they are still. Uh, plunging ahead full speed it seems like for uh, future exploration of Mars just hope the budget is there when we uh, want to do this I think it's still somewhere in the idea of maybe the year 2020 that they're going to actually think of sending humans to Mars but um, this is the kind of preparation we need to do if we want it to happen and last up this is from my friend Brenda Jet on Two Wheels she's a member of the Dumpster Divers group and as a matter of fact um, thank you everybody we're up to 210 members now so Still going strong, still a lot of posting going on. But this is Google lets you watch live data from NASA's long-lost satellite, the IC-3. I talked about that before. Um, NASA basically had abandoned it, but the thing was coming back into um, close rendezvous with Earth and the moon. And as a matter of fact, it is 10 o'clock right now, and in about 30 minutes, you guys will probably miss it, but uh, unless you've heard about it ahead of time by the time I post this, but you're actually going to be able to watch some of the encounter and uh, check out this article and look at the links and stuff like that. Yeah, this was crowdfunded and NASA turned it over, so it's all citizen scientists that are running this and they're uh, letting the public have a, um, since the public helped pay for it and helped sponsor it, they're letting the public have a big hand on this thing. So uh, hopefully they grab control of the satellite and be able to use it for a lot more uh, things in the future. Nice to uh, see something like that happening. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.